Hello there guys and welcome back to another epic inexorable maths video. In this video we're looking at how we can memorize or learn how to memorize really important trig ratios. So what is a trig ratio? Well for example if I said to you what is sine of 30 degrees well you might be very inclined to just say okay calculator time and that's absolutely fine of course you can use a calculator um, you know, we're going to look at a method to find the value of sine of 30 degrees. But if someone was to ask me, hey, what's sine of 31 degrees? I would have no idea. I'd have no clue how to how to get there. It'd be an ugly decimal for sure. Um, but I'd only have a rough guess of what it could be. So sine of 30. What about something like, I don't know, cos of 60? You know, some people memorize these. They just remember the whole table. But I think that's a bit tricky to do that. So there is a method that I'm going to show you now to memorize any of these. You can learn, there is a method to learn any uh, important trig ratio. So um, when the angle is equal to 0, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees or 90 degrees for sine, cos or tan. And I'm going to show you some other ones as well. So this is how we start it off. Consider a hand. It doesn't matter which hand it is. It can be your left hand or your right hand. But imagine that this is the palm of the hand, okay? So you're looking into your palm. So this is like an open left hand, okay? Right. And left hand's normally because most people are right-handed, me included. So it's easier to draw onto the left hand than onto the right hand. So here's what we're going to do. In the middle of the hand, in the palm, we've got the square root of x over 2. You can either write this onto your hand or you can draw this picture, whatever you need to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to label each finger different angles. You have to memorize which angle that you label, but it's just, it's the important angles. So the, the thumb, you're going to label that zero degrees. The first finger, you are going to label that 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay. Now, what do you do? Well, we're going to count fingers. Okay. We're going to do some finger counting but with trigonometry, unexpected. We're going to count clockwise for sine. And we're going to count anti-clockwise for cos. Okay. Now, here's what we do. This is very clever. If you want to know, let's do one. If you want to do sine of 30, you want to know what sine of 30 is. You take the finger that has 30 degrees on it. So you take this finger and you lower it. So you get rid of it. So the, the finger is, you know, it's like it's in your palm. There's, there's the finger, it's down. So you have it like this. Okay. Then what you do is you count, if you want sine, you need to count clockwise. So from the thumb and keep going around your hand until you get to the finger that is down and then you stop counting. You do not include the finger that is down. You, you count the number of fingers that are up before you get to that angle. So for this one, we would count one, there's the thumb, one, and then we're finished. There's no more because this the next finger is the one that is down. So there's no more. So what we do is the number of fingers that are still up, that is our value for x. And we put x into this thing here, the square root of x over two. So we know that sine of 30 is the square root of one, because it was one finger up over two, that's always there, which is just one half, which is true. Sine of 30 is a half. Let's do another one. Let's say that we want cos of 45 degrees. Okay, well, what we do is we, and actually let me just rub off this circle. Oh, hello there. Um, yeah, let's just put that back. Oh, looks like he's maybe sustained an injury, but it's fine. So let's say we want cos of 45 degrees. Okay, well, 45 is the middle finger. So we put the middle finger down. So now we have a sort of, this sort of situation right here. And because it's cos, we're going to count anti-clockwise. We're going to go around anti-clockwise. We're going to count anti-clockwise. So starting, actually, starting from the uh, the pinky finger, because that's, our, that's where we're starting from, because the thumb is on the left. We're going to count anti-clockwise. So we've got, 
one finger here, that's going down, two fingers, two fingers. Once we get to the third finger, it's down, we don't count it, so we're only counting the first two fingers, so our x is just going to be two. So we can say that cos of 45 degrees is the square root of two over two, which is also true. It is, it is the square root of two over two. Let's do one more. Let's say that we want sine of 60 degrees. Okay, put the 60 degrees finger down and then count clockwise, so that finger's gone. Count clockwise um, how many fingers are still up. So 0, 30, 45, that's three fingers still up, which means that sine of 60 is 1, 2, 3, so square root of 3 over 2. Okay, because we, we always use the square root of the number of fingers that are still up as we count round, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, divided by 2. So it's square root of 3 over 2, which is also true. Now you might say this is all well and good, brilliant, okay, I can find all of them. So, you know, definitely come up with some of your own. Try, you know, try cos 90, try cos 30, see what you get, see if it works, you know, use a calculator to see. But this isn't the only thing it can do, because we can also find values for tan doing this. Because we have this equation that tan of any angle is equal to sine of that angle divided by cos of the angle. So for an example, if we want tan of 30, this is equal to sine of 30 divided by cos of 30. So if we individually find sine and cos of 30 and we divide, then we'll find tan of 30. So we already found out what sine of 30 is. Sine of 30 was 1 over 2. We just need to now know what cos of 30 is. So let's find out what cos of 30 is. We're going to put the 30 degrees finger down, and then we're going to count anti-clockwise because it's cos. And we're going to go, okay, 90, 60, 45, that's three fingers. So cos of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. Isn't that really nifty? Isn't that really cool? And then simplifying this, we can multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 to get 1 over root 3. And if you want to, you can rationalize the denominator. You don't have to. But you can write this. You can multiply both sides by root 3, top and bottom. You get root 3 over 3. So tan of 30 degrees is either 1 over root 3 or root 3 over 3. They're the same number, but you can write it in either way. So there you go. That's how you find any value of sine, cos, or tan. But we're still not done. I won't go into it in this video, but if you're familiar with the reciprocal trig functions, you can also find any of these angles for cosec, sec, and cot by just doing 1 over. So if you want cosec of 30, you do 1 over sine of 30, which is 1 divided by a half, which is 2, which means that cosec of 30 degrees must be 2. There you go, I've kind of written that in the corner there a little bit, but cosec of 30 degrees is 2. You can also do this in radians because you can convert the degrees into radians and it will still work. As long as you use the same angles, it will still work. You're absolutely fine. Just say, well, you know, 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians, so cosec of pi over 6 is 2. Boom, there you're in radians. But that's still not what this, not everything this can do. This can also do the inverse trig functions of sine, cos, tan, and the reciprocal ones too. Because if you want to find, let's say we have an equation solve, let's say sine x, um, actually I'll do this, we want to solve for theta, sine theta equals, let's do root 2 over 2. Okay, well that means, because in this time we're not finding sort of sine of what angle equals root 2 over 2, well what this means is the answer to this, theta, by definition, theta has to be inverse sine of root 2 over 2. That's Otherwise this equation is not true. Because you should be able to put theta as inverse sine of, of both sides and it should it should work, which it does. So all we need to do is figure out which angle of theta gives you root 2 over 2. So we want root 2 over 2. So let's clockwise, we'll count two fingers and then the third one we'll put down. So 1, 2, and then we'll put the third one down because we don't want to count it. So we have two fingers. So two fingers going across must correspond to root 2 over 2 by definition, which means that this must be 45 degrees because that's the finger that we like that we put down, which is, you know, if you're thinking about the other way around, that's the one that you want 
you want 45 degrees, see what that's equal to. But this time we wanted to count across, so we kind of did it backwards, if that makes sense. Don't worry too much about that last bit, but what you end up getting is that you, you know the inverse sine of root 2 over 2 must be 45 degrees. Okay, so you also know all of the inverse ones. So to summarize, you can use this method, this, this hand method, to find all of the following. And there's actually more that you can find as well that I didn't write down, but these are just some of the ones you can find with this hand method. You can find all of these, so sine of 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, cos of all of the same, tan of all of the same, but not tan 90, because it's undefined, but it's fine. You can also find cosec of all of those angles, sec of all of those, cot of all of those. Again, some of those are undefined, so you've only got four of them. And you can find all of these, the inverse functions. And these are not even the only ones. There are so many more that you can find just by using this hand method. That is all you are using. That's it. That's all you are using. So it's incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful, really, really useful. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share, do whatever you want to do. And I'll see you in the next video.